Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. Today we're celebrating nine years of Mama Elephant with a fantastic blog hop, Instagram hop, and of course I have a new card to share with you. This is a Christmas Gnomes mushroom house using lots of new products from the release. Please make sure and stay tuned throughout the month and definitely into next month I will have a big video with lots of the products from this release. Um, we're gonna get through our stamp timber madness, but then I do have a big video where I'll be sharing lots of projects as well as something with Mama Elephant in my handmade holiday series. On this four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of smooth white cardstock, I am applying prize ribbon distress oxide ink pretty much like three quarters of the way or so down the panel. I'm just leaving a little bit of white down near the bottom to kind of mimic that look of a dark blue sky against a snowy ground. And then we will be adding some snowfall to this background for added interest. Once I have my ink blending all done, let's clean up our work surface really quick. We're gonna grab the waffle flower Snow Fall Stencil. I'm also using a new product from Waffle Flower here. This is their new stencil mat. It is amazing. It grips your paper. You don't have to worry about it sliding all over the place. You'll notice I've not taped my stencil in place. And I am applying Tim Holtz Grit Paste here over the top. Um, I do wanna make mention of the new Waffle Flower products as well. There's new blending brushes, these great um, stencil mats. This is the small or the mini size, and then there is the other regular size as well. These are amazing. They clean up fantastic. If you've got their media mats, you already know. I will be doing a big video for that coming soon as well. So I am going to die cut the Mushroom House components from Smooth White cardstock and color everything in with Copic markers. So I am kind of, I try to match usually the background elements to whatever I'm coloring and I decided to color my gnomes or my little she gnomes mostly um, with Copic markers today and so I thought it would be fun to have my house match. I like to lay down a layer of E40 first and then I very messily added E44 and now I'm going in and pretty messy blending out with E43 but not super blending. I want to keep the texture of the base of the mushroom and I like that. I think that looks amazing. It looks really sloppy up at the top. That is totally okay with this card. I love that all the components are separate for this mushroom house. I know that lots of companies have mushroom houses. I personally like them all. Um, I even think that a lot of these would go together really well if you want to create like a whole little village. Um, think of combining the uh, for sure Lawn Fawn products with Mama Elephant. I really think you could create some super cute little uh, forest type of scenes with these dyes. For the top of the mushroom house, I am coloring it in with R45 and R pardon me, R46 and R59. And I'm not coloring down near the base. There's really no need because there's another layering piece that I'm going to be adding on top. Now I felt like the R59 didn't blend out enough. So I went in and kind of feathered that back in. And then I'm immediately going back with R46 and blending that out. And you can see how it fits right on top of the little mushroom house. Next, for the little kind of skirt around the bottom of my mushroom here, I'm going to use YR24 and 31. You might have noticed I cleaned up my glass work surface before I started this step. I do not want any of the red that might be on my glass mat to get picked up with the tip of my yellow marker and transfer to this um, little piece that I'm coloring right now and it definitely would so kind of be, even though it's hard to see on the black surface of this Tim Holtz glass mat make sure you're cleaning your mat pretty consistently and not picking up other colors and transferring them to what you're coloring and then this piece just layers right around the base of the top of that mushroom how adorable is that I love it 
so so cute now you can really build your mushrooms any way you want I'm actually going to put a little window up at the top of the mushroom for this card and the door down here at the base you could also put a window maybe in the center of the base here if you leave out the door or put a window in that medium sized mushroom whatever you want to do to build your little mushroom house or mushroom village another thing i very much like about this mushroom set is that you get three sizes of mushrooms you get the large medium and small and that really makes it versatile if you want to die cut multiples I colored in the door just like I did the base of my mushroom and now I am coloring in the trim around the door itself. This is something else I really love about this set and that is that there's separate pieces for everything meaning it's very easy to layer. So this little door opens which is going to be fantastic for having a little gnome peeking out the side of the door. I'm going to go ahead and glue the door to the door frame panel and you'll notice I colored a messy YR31 to the door so it looks like there's a light on inside because that's going to get covered up and no one will see it. Then I'm going to put some adhesive around the door casing and pop that right in place along the bottom edge of my mushroom house. Now there's going to be quite a bit of room here on my mushroom house between the top of the mushroom and the door. And I decided to go through some of my other Mama Elephant sets from the brand new year nine release, the anniversary release, to see what other Christmas items I had that I could use to dress up the house. And that is gonna be a cute little wreath that I will be adding here in a minute when I stamp and color the mushroom, or mushrooms, the gnomes. <laughs> Let's go ahead and color in the window for the top of my mushroom house, a little YR31 for the backing. And then for the casing here on the window, I actually chose to do some dark browns. So that's gonna be E59, 47, and 44. And then we're gonna glue these right in place and pop it right at the top of the mushroom house. I love all of these die cuts. They're perfect for building scene cards, which you guys know I absolutely love. And again, cleaning up my glass mat as I'm going because I did use some nice dark colors there and I wanna make sure that they don't transfer as I color in the rest of the pieces for my mushroom house and mushroom card. I like that little window at the top here. I think that's just a fun little magical touch. Now off camera, I did go ahead and put foam adhesive on the back of this house and I'm going to pop it up kind of in the center along the bottom edge. It is fairly good size so you can see it takes up quite a bit of room on the card. Now I'm immediately going to color in my other mushroom. I think I colored part of it here, but it is really exactly like the large one. It's gonna have all of the same pieces. So it's got the base, the top, and then that little skirt thing that goes around. Um, the small one only has the base and then the top. So keep that in mind there. We're coloring everything the same, we'll assemble it, and then we're gonna kinda tuck it back behind on the right side of the card. Another thing I love about this set is that it is not Christmas specific, meaning you could create a spring, summer, fall scene with your gnomes. I went ahead and adhered the other, the teeny tiny little or the small mushroom there next to the house with foam adhesive as well. I've stamped three gnome images, which is actually four gnomes total from the little girl gnome agenda. And then we've got our wreath from another stamp set and I'm gonna color everything in with Copic markers. I've stamped my images on Nina smooth white cardstock. I know I listed R20 for the cheeks on the screen, but you saw me using R00. R00 actually did not show up like I wanted it to, so I really did go back over the cheeks with R20. I don't think I did it on camera, so I did wanna make mention of that here because that way it really shows up. 
Next, we're coloring in red accents. That's going to be the little berries, the candy canes, the bow on the wreath, and the hearts on some of the gnomes' outfits. One thing that is amazing about this stamp set is that there are lots of girl gnomes. It is the girl gnome stamp set after all, but there's also some little guy gnomes as well. But I love that this is just a nice companion to what's already out there. And again, a fantastic addition to the little agenda sets from Mama Elephant that we all love. I've also decided to kind of stick with a pretty simple color palette for my card. That's going to be red and green, of course, for those traditional green colors, and then kind of a peachy pinkish red that I'll use in addition to that for some of the outfits for a little added color. I decided not to go too modern with my color choices or anything like that and keep everything pretty consistent. I'm coloring in the hair on this first gnome with E43 and E44. I also thought that with a standard A2 size card and that big mushroom house, I was a little limited by how many images I could add to the design. If you were going to do a landscape slimline card with the mushroom house and all of the things, I really feel like you could add a lot more gnomes and images and all of that good stuff if you wanted to. And if that's something you guys would like to see in the future, definitely let me know. Or maybe even a video showing how to combine this gnome home with or mushroom home with others that are on the market to create an entire gnome village. I think that would be super fun as well. So here is that peachy pink color combination. That's R30, 32, and 35. I tried to do R30 and 32, and it just was a little too peach for me. I wanted to incorporate a little bit more of that R35 in here, which I ended up really loving. She has a little red apron, um, a little green trim on her apron, and then brown shoes. And I'm gonna do brown shoes with E49 and 47 for all of the images. Again, consistency was key here. Now we are going to, yep, I did change their cheek color to R20 so that they had pink cheeks. I couldn't remember if it was on camera or not. Now one of the color combinations that ended up being, I kind of hesitate to say, but my favorite is G43 and 28. You have to work a little bit to get these two colors to blend, but I actually really love them for the gnome outfits, and I thought they were very, very cute and very fun. I really liked that. In fact, I liked it so much for the little um, boy gnome that I actually do a green outfit for the girl with her pigtails flying. For the beard, this is gonna be warm gray three and zero zero. This is a combination I use a lot for gnomes, whether they're stamped or die cut. We're gonna feather it in and we're actually not going to do tons of blending. So we're kind of doing a flicking or feathering motion of pulling that color down and flicking it up with our dark color and then going in with our light color and doing the exact same thing. That gives the illusion of hair. For this little girl gnome, I actually used YR24 and 31, which you might remember is the same color combination that I used for some of the accents on the mushroom home, but I really liked it here as well. It kind of gives a strawberry blondish look. Um, these are yellow red colors, so that's probably definitely um, the color combination you're getting there, but I liked that. And then when you pair that with a green outfit, it will be very, very cute. I'm just gonna go in with my dark green. I generally trace out with my dark and then blend with my light. I did not always color this way. It's something I've kind of adopted recently. This is what I do with my zigs. And so I feel like um, part of that is just, that's kind of how I'm used to coloring anymore. So I'll usually start with my dark and then start 
blending with my light. You can see that that definitely doesn't blend fantastic right at the get-go, so you may have to go over it a couple times. If you use some colors that were maybe a little closer together in numbers, you might not have to blend quite as much, but I like this color combination a lot. And then we'll move on to our last little girl gnome before we can put it all together. So we've got a lot of green, so we're gonna go in with our peachy pink reds again. And I'm gonna start with R35 this time and then blend out with R32 and finished with R30. And then she also has a little apron this time I'm gonna do a green apron with red trim and brown, no, I think I went ahead and did the strawberry blonde pigtails for her as well. So really consistent colors, but I think it works fantastic. I tried not to use too much red for the gnome images and that was very much on purpose. With the red, uh, roofs of the mushroom homes and all of the red accents there. I wanted to limit how much there was just to give your eye a little bit of a break because that red really is bold. So this, while still feels red, it gives you a little bit different tone or shade. Now that we have our images, I'm going to pop up the wreath right above the door. You can hang it on the door, but I didn't really want to cover up the window, so I'm hanging it right above the door. I think that's the perfect little Christmas accent. We are going to pop the boy and girl gnome over here on the right side. I put foam adhesive only behind her. She's the only part hanging off the side of the house, which is already popped up. And then the, he, the boy gnome was glued directly to the house. And I will move the card there a little bit better. I popped up the girl with the candy canes standing on top of the small mushroom, and then the other girl is popping out from the door. Finishing detail time. You guys know how much I love the finishing details. So we need a sentiment, and we also need to maybe add some detail to the eyes, to the door, all that good stuff. So I stamped the Easy Christmas Greetings on some white cardstock with black ink. They utilize a die that was released several months ago that has been wildly popular. It die cuts these sentiment strips. It's amazing, you get many sentiment strips. I kept the extras I'm not using. They will be used on additional cards later on. I'm gonna put that uh, on my card with foam adhesive up at the top. I'm gonna use a black glaze pen to create a little doorknob on my door. And then I want to take my black glaze pen and add detail to the eyes because this always makes characters and critters eyes pop. And finally, I want to add some little spots to the top of my mushrooms, which were die cut from smooth white cardstock. Now that I kind of know where everything's going to go and I see where my open spots are, I'm able to easily color and add those to the tops of the mushrooms. So that is going to be YR24 and 31. Additional ideas, if you die cut that kind of rounded square shape that I used back behind the window from the top of your mushroom house or from the smaller medium sized mushroom base, you could always pop a gnome back behind there and have them peeking out. I wish I would have thought of it because I think a gnome up at the top of the house would have been really cute peeking through that window. So just another idea of a way to utilize these adorable gnomes for your card. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Christmas gnomes card scene card featuring Mama Elephant stamps and dies. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring Mama Elephant products that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.